All right, good morning, traders. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with your Monday morning rundown. So what I like to do in these um, Monday morning videos is just talk about the indices. Uh, our trading room starts in about uh, 20 minutes live uh, at 8.50. So uh, we go through all the single names and all the single name setups. So what I first like to do, which you see in front of us, what I first like to do is kind of is go over the major indices, some of the macro moves first Monday morning, because um, every hour we get a, uh, excuse me, every Monday we, we get a new value area on the one hour chart. And that proved really, um, really interesting to watch for, um, for last week. There were some really good levels that, um, that we saw, which, which, which stood up. So first of all, um, you know, I'm not going to go over the individual movers again. That's in the trading room. I'll do that. But um, overnight markets, you know, just a quick rundown of, of what happened. And, and again, this is, you know, significant when futures open over the weekend and uh, what overnight markets do. But, um, you know, a couple really strong points here is Japan. I think Japan's been up now 10 or 11 days in a row. Uh, so really, really strong. We've been seeing a lot of call buying in both DXJ, DXJ and EWJ. Those are two of the uh, Japan ETFs. Uh, we saw those last week. I detailed those out last week. Um, and then the Hang Seng up uh, was up more than that. It was opened actually opened up around one percent. So, but still up three quarters of a percent. So, uh, and then there's a lot of other things like um, like India was also up sixty basis points. Uh, so really strong. The strength continues in Asia. Uh, in Europe this morning, kind of flat markets. Looks like uh, the DAX is up a little bit, sub 17 basis points. Euro stocks are up 10. But, um, you know, I see a lot of people, it's funny, I see a lot of people tweet out like, oh, S&P futures, they're up 10 basis points. And they're not even looking at the big moves, which are, which are, um, it's Asia, you know. So even like NASDAQ, I saw people tweeting about NASDAQ. It's like, you're really, you're not even looking at what the Hang Seng is doing, up 1%. 1%. Um, so it's just amazing, like, to me, how focused, um, how focused uh, some traders are that you see on Twitter. Well, and he was economic front at the bottom of the hour. State. Empire Manufacturing for October. Cannot. Estimate 20 spot four, the prior number 24.4. Why our futures are up 20 basis points. You know, that is usually a response to what is going on overseas. But anyway, that's a whole other subject. I want to keep this video short. Copper uh, continues from last week up 3%. So, I mean, look at this. This is really strong. Uh, watch names like SCCO and FCX this morning. But um, you got a 52 week, I believe that's a 52 week high in uh, copper. Uh, pre, if not, it's pretty pretty darn near close, but really, really strong. It was strong last week, and um, it looks like it's got the biggest day in, in quite some time. And copper oil is also up decently, up 1.7%, but all the other metal names, I think palladium and uh, platinum are, are also up uh, pretty strong. Gold uh, is up 20 basis points as well. So one of the things that I like to look at is, you know, first we'll, we'll look at the daily chart in the S&P, and there's not really much to kind of go on here in terms of support. Support on, on the October value is all the way down here. So basically when, when we're out of range like this, what we want to look at is, is the moving averages. And, and the yellow, you could see that the S&P is basically just been um, above the five period exponential moving average, which is the yellow line. So we are overbought and um, we're riding the wave up. Um, so 30.2 Empire I'll Manufacturing, 30.2 um, bidding estimates of 20.4. Uh, sorry, I have Bloomberg squawk up. Uh, that's if that's if you're hearing that in the background. But um, just like we started last week, uh, you know, really the barrier or or the the resistance level was 25.50. And, uh, you know, we barely moved all week long from where we started. You know, we tried to kind of break out a couple of times. We actually ended higher on Friday. And it looks like we're starting the week above value, which is a good thing. So uh, when we start the week above value, you know your support levels. It's defined. It's 25.52 in S&P Futures. Uh, support uh, further down. Look at some of the data here. Inventory is a minus 7.8 versus a prior 6.5. Um, Unfill orders dropped so to 2.3 versus 8.9. Is support there, but uh, you know, I it's again. I look at S and P futures, and then on the, on the five minute, um, if you're looking for just a today's level, I would for for, for a breakout for today, 25.55. So that's the level that we need, which is where we average work week 4.7 versus a prior 4.1. 20, 25.55 
is uh, is what you want to watch there for resistance. And again, going back to that support level, that's 25.52. Nasdaq's going to be a little bit different. Um, first of all, let's go let's go back to the daily chart. And the daily chart, just like S and P, you know, we're riding this five period exponential moving average above. We're way above the October uh, top of value. So then we go over to the uh, one hour. We're going to start the week above value, um, like we did last week. We started the week above value again. It was a lot of chop. We stayed above value for the whole week. We almost tested it. I think that was Tuesday, but we uh, continued to move higher. Uh, what what we're looking at for support for this week is is sixty eighty four. Or if you look at the cues, which I'll move to here, it's 148.06. That's your support level for the week. And then on the five-minute level, you can see we're also above uh, we're above value. So 148.44 is your first level of support. Again, that's 148.44 and um, 148.06. Those are the two levels. But um, you know, 52-week highs right now pre-market in the queues. So nothing really to watch on the upside. Really, just those support levels that I mentioned. IWM, which was uh, you know did a lot of digestion uh, last week. You know, again, we started the week above value. Let's sorry. Let me start with the daily chart first. Uh, we're above value on the. Um, for the for the daily chart 14686 is is all the way down in support again just like S&P and Q's were were above value on that daily chart so really what to watch here again last week we started in value we stayed that way all week long this week we're also starting in value but look at how small the value area is it won't take much to get us up or below considering again this is always based this week's value area is always based on last week's range which was really tight so that's why you've got a really tight value area 149 for nine excuse me 149.93 is your resistance 149.44 is your support on the five minute bar um, looks like we're just starting the week above or we're starting the day above value 149.73 is the level to watch for the day uh, uh, so that's it for um, for the for the index rundown. Again, uh, we go over all the individual name setups, uh, which we'll be doing. I've got my um, my eye on a couple things this morning. Uh, so you can, um, if you're looking to uh, check out the Tribeca tree, Trade Group and you have not before, um, you can email me for uh, for for a week trial. Uh, my email address is cfromhertz at gmail.com c-f-r-o-m-h-e-r-t-z and you can check us out for a week see what it's all about thanks everybody thanks everybody for watching the video and uh, have a great week